Before I begin my explanation of the code, I'll show a quick demonstration of how the final product works. As you can see, when I select some cells on the grid and click the spacebar, the simulation advances according to a few simple rules, which we'll eventually get to. My reason for building this project was that it came up as one of the tasks while I was completing the exercises on the not-for-profit site FreeCodeCamp. If this tutorial interests you, I encourage you to visit FreeCodeCamp as well for more great learning resources and projects that might interest you. This is the Wikipedia page for John Conway's Game of Life. It just gives you an idea of some patterns that you'll see while developing this project. On the left you can see some patterns don't change at all, some patterns oscillate forever, and some patterns appear to be moving across the board. In the game of life, cells that have color are considered to be alive, and cells that are dead have no color. The simulation progresses according to the four simple rules that you can see here. John Conway first publicized the game in a 1970s issue of Scientific American. I'll now begin an explanation of the ReactJS code running this project. To find the project on CodePen, use the link below. Let's begin by examining the HTML section. As you can see, there's not much going on. There's simply a div with an ID of content and a paragraph with some short instructions. Later, we'll tell React to render everything to the div. The CSS section is also quite short. We simply describe how the borders should look, what size cells should be, and the color difference between living and dead cells. In the JavaScript section, we actually have a syntax called JSX, which is very similar to JavaScript but has minor differences. JSX is used by React. The very last method in this section is actually the first line of code that will be executed by our program. Inside of the react dom.render function, you'll see the first instruction indicates that we want to render a box component, and the second instruction tells React where to render that box component, which in this case is inside of the content div that we declared in our HTML section. We now might wonder, what does a box component consist of? Let's scroll up slightly and look at its definition. A box component is a React class. In this case, it has two main methods. The first being getInitialState, and the second being render. Inside getInitialState, we see that we declare an empty array called C. We then have a for loop that runs 100 times. On each iteration of the loop, we push a cell component to the formerly empty array. We give it a unique identifier and a reference to the array that we're creating. The last line in the getInitialState function saves the array that we just created so that it will be accessible as part of the state of the box component. Now let's examine what happens in the box component's render function. The box component's render function is fairly simple. React is smart enough that when we pass it this.state.cells, which is the array that we created, each cell will be rendered sequentially inside of the box as expected. Up until now, what we've rendered is a single div with 100 cells inside of it. Now let's scroll up further and see what a cell consists of. The declaration of the cell component is the longest code block that we have in this program. It consists of several methods. We'll start by looking at the render function at the very bottom of the declaration. According to the render function, we can see that each cell consists of a division with a class name and an on-click handler. The class name of each cell is governed by whether or not the cell is selected. If this.state.selected is true, then the cell will have a class of cell and active. Yet if this.state.selected is false, each cell will simply have a class of cell, indicating that it's dead. The onclick handler indicates that when a cell is clicked, this.onclick will be run. Let's now scroll up and examine the declaration of the onclick function. When a cell is clicked, the onclick function is run. As we can see here, it consists of only a single line. This single line toggles the state of the cell. This.state.selected will be either true or false. The exclamation operator flips that value. The flip value is then assigned to the value selected, and this.setState makes that the new value for the cell. The result that this has is living cells become dead when clicked, and vice versa. It's also interesting to note that in React, this dot set state triggers a re-render of the view, which means that when we update the state of a cell, it's automatically re-rendered. React runs the component did mount method shortly before a component is rendered to the screen. As mentioned before, every cell is passed a reference 
to the array containing all the cells. We can access this array using this.props.cells. The first line of this method updates that global array with a reference to the state object for this cell component. It does this so that at any time, any cell can access the state of any other cell. This is very important functionality when we try to determine how many neighbors a cell has, which is an important thing to determine given the rules of the game of life. Under certain circumstances, we want to indicate to our cells to calculate what their next value will be. We also want to be able to tell cells to render their next value. These next two lines of code tell every cell to listen for two events, one that we call calculate and one that we call render next. When we scroll up, you'll see that events is simply a blank object, but we can still use jQuery to tell each cell to listen for events on that object. We'll now scroll down and examine another function that listens for spacebar press. When the spacebar is pressed, the calculate and the render next events are fired on the object. Each cell listening then receives these events and handles them with the appropriate methods. The render next function is declared just above. It consists of a single line that instructs each cell to change its state to what it's calculated to be its next state. We'll now scroll up and examine the method which allows cells to determine what their next state should be. Inside the calculate function, we start by declaring some variables. Neighbors is how many neighbors the cell will have. We, use some, we then use some math to determine size, which gives us the length of a side of the board. We also determine row and column from the ID of the cell, which is the cell's position in the array of 100 cells. Every cell has eight neighbors. We then check each of the cell's neighbors to determine if that cell is live or dead. If it's alive, we increase neighbors by one. The function this.isSelected is declared above and we'll cover it shortly. Now that we know how many neighbors the cell has, we can apply the rules of the game of life to it to determine if it should live to the next round. We don't want to set this.state.selected directly because that would cause the cell to re-render immediately and future cells would miscalculate. So we save the state of the cell in this.state.nextState so that we can later use that value to re-render the cell properly. We'll now examine one of the methods that we used earlier, this.isSelected. We passed it a row and a column and expected a true or false value indicating whether that cell was alive or dead in return. The isSelected function first calculates the length of a side of the board and calls it size. There's then four if statements. In order to explain what these if statements do, I'll give an example of how the first one works. As you can see, if a cell is requested that's in row minus one, the row is changed to the final row, which in this case would be row number 9. A short formula is then used to convert the row in the column back to an ID, which can be used to look up the cell in the global array and determine whether it's alive or dead. There's one more method that a cell component has called getInitialState. GetInitialState sets up the initial state of a cell before anything else happens. It initializes the different elements of state of a cell component to false. I hope this explanation motivates you to continue working on free CodeCamp projects. Thanks for listening to my explanation.